was a kid, I learned how to read when I was four, listening to my mom who was reading Mickey Mouse uh, comics, books with uh, just highlighting where she was reading. And uh, in a month in the summer, I learned how to read Mickey Mouse alone. And um, from the age of uh, five or six, I started reading many, many books. At the age of six, I was reading about five books a week. My parents uh, didn't have the fortune to buy those books, so we they were going twice a week at the library and uh, finding uh, some books they could borrow. And um, in uh, very soon, I was interested in topics that were attesting of a deeper view of, of the human, such as uh, graphology, psychology, deep psychology. By uh, 16, 17, I had read the complete works of uh, Freud, Jung, Adler, and uh, other psychologists. I, I liked very much Ronald Lang, anti-psychiatry. And then I discovered uh, Alan Kardec, um, experiences with contacts with something that was difficult to understand by the official sciences but that Alan Kardec wanted to prove that really did exist and so he organized a protocol a research protocol to attest evidence from contacts with dead uh, folks and and also got messages on what could happen in the future. In the fact that Alan Kardec was a scientist, a minded person, and he wanted to provide evidence of, of these facts. And he, he was uh, rejected by his society and the medical society of his time. I read books also in this area. And uh, I, I would say that at the time I was 30, I had read probably hundreds and hundreds of books in, in several areas. I started focusing on my, my first PhD and I, um, you know, kind of uh, put aside uh, all these readings and understandings to enter into what would become a professional life in social science, for which uh, I published so many articles in top-ranked journals that I can say I, I, I thrived to uh, develop knowledge as a social scientist. I didn't go in the main, mainstream arena for other reasons than I was passionate with, with writing. I loved exploring new stuff, envisioning, for example, teacher planning, not from the perspective of what to do and how to do, but from the perspective of what happens in the cognition of the teacher at the time that they are reflecting on their courses and the forthcoming courses. And what I discovered was actually there were patterns and there was a grammar of teacher cognition of the knowledge transformation before teaching. And so I, I developed the first uh, macro semantic grammar of teachers thinking. It was a, a life of deep interest and passion for what I was doing. I was trained both as a quantitative and qualitative scientist, and I could, uh, I, I think, uh, use the best of both worlds, understanding their, their limitations. The academia was limited to, uh, in, in my field at least, to the understanding of what was objective to a world of objects. And so I, I found that uh, we, uh, by nature, live in a world of subject. Everything is, is animated. And that changes everything in the contact with uh, beings, with nature, with uh, other elements. And so I, I'll uh, deal with those elements. But it's really my passion uh, with writing that stimulated me to explore other aspects of writing because I found uh, some friends were 
able to write uh, what came to their mind spontaneously in a creative way. And I had all this knowledge about uh, people receiving messages and, and, re and being connected with what e either they called their higher self or higher intelligence. And, and so I, because I'm, uh, you know, an exploratory mind, I thought, okay, why not testing that? And so in the morning uh, for, for a couple of weeks, I, I started writing what was coming spontaneously to the mind and connected to a source of wisdom, if you like, inside of me. And I didn't try to define whether this was uh, contacting my subconscious or contacting a higher self or, or whatever. But I, I wanted, a, I, I would say, a pure channel, something that would attest of, of a, a clean way of life, a, a, a purity inside and the elements that could be helpful uh, first to me and to others. And as soon as uh, this unfolded, uh, there were um, expressions that were uh, out of what I could normally express. Sentences in which I would not recognize myself and sentences in which I would recognize people I loved very much and who are past. I started to write for a couple of weeks and at some point uh, Isabel, my wife, asked me, uh, what, what are you doing? So I just explained and I <clears throat> read to her just uh, what had popped up in the morning, which was about her mom. And it was... Um, something strange. I would say uh, I didn't reflect much because it's just popped up so about it, but it was something that normally uh, was not possible about uh, my mother-in-law. And so she read that and, you know, became reflective. She said, I don't think my mother uh, thinks that way and that this could happen. What happened was the next day, there was a call with her mom and and her mom explained that her, an, an event had happened and uh, that she felt exactly the way it was described in what I had received. And this happened a few times. And then I, I understood I could give some credibility to what was written. And, uh, and that actually, it gave me some advice on my own life, on what to do and decisions. It was a reflective and deep insight on, on aspects of my life that from a perspective I had n never thought about. And so I started relying upon this and I, I don't do that regularly, but you know, every third day or so things come and sometimes it's a few sentences, sometimes it's a whole page. It came uh, as an understanding that the, this was possible for her human to have a deeper contact. That I knew from my past readings, but it was interesting. It came to me who, you know, who had a career as, as a social scientist who who had developed this, um, this mindset of curiosity, but also of, of uh, keeping quite uh, um, neutral in my own assertions for, for scientific writing, for instance. And then it came. At some point, the writing expressed that I, I should start making that public. And uh, to me, that was a bit... Um, a challenge, a, a big, big challenge, because going public, you know, when for 30 years I, I made my reputation uh, as a social scientist is becoming public on things that were, you know, immaterial in a sense, even though my ontology is, is a, a transmodern, and even though it's, it's that, um, we live in a world of subjects, not in a world of objects, but most people don't understand. A large uh, part uh, of our populations are 
in this may uh, uh, in trouble are confused and there is big confusion around the planet because of what's happening currently people uh, might need this information i could convey and and might need a reference point with a, a message of, of wisdom i you know i, I took um, two three days to reflect about it i have all the the tools, the technical knowledge, because I did so much research on uh, <clears throat> learning technologies, for instance. But yeah, it, it was a, a leap of, you know, a leap of faith for me to get public with what I was uh, receiving. At the same time, I, I felt I didn't see in, in the various uh, YouTube channels I, I knew and some are beautiful and excellent outstanding i i didn't see a profile such as mine expressing viewpoints that are challenging about the quantum field in a sense the quantum energies that manifest beyond time and space it's a, it's pretty much of an adventure i will try my best to give a, a honest account of what I'm receiving, but also I'm told there are several aspects that need a clarification from a philosophical and wisdom viewpoint about what's happening in this world currently and uh, about forthcoming uh, event. It, these are very touchy aspects and uh, they, uh, you know, deal with belief systems they believe with the ideologies we have been developing in our own uh, trends um, our vision of life yet uh, what's coming probably within a year uh, latest uh, three years is so important that uh, people will be in this area will, will be you know stunned and there will be an uproar um, very soon. I anticipate before 2021 about revelation and disclosures about uh, to happen. While personally, I have a quite a peaceful uh, and loving sense of uh, what's coming because it's all for the good. I sense that so many people will be very, very upset and very challenged by the coming months and, and years. And, and so I'm, I'm invited to, you know, kind of uh, <laughs> uh, against my uh, initial impulse because I'm kind of a shy person and I, I prefer working in silence than uh, being exposed. But uh, with some reflection, I accepted to, uh, you know, to follow the challenge, even for a couple of videos, and we'll see how this unfolds. I'm very thankful to um, people who watch this video for their uh, kind and understanding. I would say that I had a, a life uh, focused on uh, the intellect and uh, the intellect in society and, and how it affects issues of languages, cultures and migration. Now the proposal is to put this intellect at the service of the heart and, and the community for people who might feel that this message resonates with them at this point of their life. And uh, it may be for a while, and uh, if you visit, I'm, I'm glad to welcome you uh, here on this channel. Thank you very much. I'm grateful to you for your presence here. Thank you.